another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, we're finally getting around to it. Five very underrated chronographs, at least in my opinion. That's what we're going to talk about today. But of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Uh, today, trusty old Seiko SKX. I'm always wearing this when I have a super busy day of running around because this thing could take a beating and I don't really have to worry about it. So that's on the wrist today. And of course, I wanna point you guys to Delray Watch Supply. That's delraywatch.com, my website, where I sell service and buy pre-owned watches. We just got in a pretty rare and unique Tudor from um, the mid 2000s that was sold only in Europe, to the best of my knowledge. Very Art Deco styling on this particular Tudor. Maybe not everybody's cup of tea, but go check it out. It is the Tudor Archeo. And let's get right into the meat and potatoes of this discussion. Five chronographs that I feel are really underrated. Now, of course, when we're talking about chronographs, everybody brings up the Rolex Daytona. Fantastic watch. Omega Speedmaster. I own one myself. Uh, Breitling Navitimer. IWC Portuguese. Uh, what else is out there? There's a ton. JLC Master Chrono. Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore. Uh, Brigade Type 20. Lange Datagraph. You know, everything from a couple thousand dollars to a few hundred thousand dollars, there's some really iconic choices. But unfortunately, there are some chronographs out there that I think don't get the love they deserve, either because they're a great watch or because they're really well priced or because, you know, it's a brand that may be a little bit unfortunate to have on the dial, but they still make a great watch. And that's what we're going to talk about today, watches that I think are really underestimated, undervalued, and for you guys can provide a great value pre-owned on the second-hand market. And these are in no particular order, and I'm going to show you uh, some pictures and tell you what I think makes these watches special. Now, to get started, I'm going to start with anything made by Glassuta Original. But for the sake of narrowing it down, uh, I love the Glassuta Original Senator Chronograph. It's styled uh, very much in the you know in the German Bauhaus. Uh, era, you know, it's not for everybody. However, the movement is fantastic. It's hand engraved. It's got a column wheel chronograph and a vertical clutch. Very balanced dial. Uh, this Senator 60s model has the curved crystal, which not only is costly to make, but is fantastic. And if any of you guys are vintage watch lovers, but you can't pull off a 33, 34, 35 millimeter watch, this is a great piece for you because it fits that vein fantastically, and of course, it's a bigger size. Now, Glasuta, uh, I'm not exactly sure how many watches they make, but I'm gonna guess under 20,000 a year, well under, in fact, and they give a lot of attention to detail. And as well, in the second-hand market, you know, I don't wanna say they're dirt cheap, but compared to retail, they can really be had for a steal. So my pick on this one is the Glasuta Senator 60s Chronograph. Next is a brand that doesn't get much love, but they did make a fantastic chronograph, and I have to bring it up today. And that is the Bomber Mercier Capeland Flyback Limited Edition. Now, this watch, full disclosure, is available for sale at Delray Watch Supply. And I did pick it because I recently came into my possession, and I'm like, wow, this is super underappreciated. This houses a La Joux Pere movement, which is basically a 7750, but bigger, that's been modified, <clears throat> excuse me, with a flyback feature. And the movement is heavily decorated with the blued screws and the Cote de Genève. This is not your standard La Joux Pere slash 7750. Now, this watch is a throwback to the old Capelins. It's styled in a 1940s, 50s kind of style. It's got blue and white on the dial, and everybody knows I love the blue. Uh, even the strap is curved to fit the lug, which is fantastic. Display case back, flyback feature, by compacts. If this watch didn't say Bum Mercier on the dial, it would be worth five times more than what it sells for. And unfortunately, when Bum Mercier released it, the retail price 
was around 8,000 US dollars, which is a tough ask. Once again though, had it been another brand, they would have been able to pull it off, which is unfortunate because B&M does make great watches, just not much love nowadays. However, they're making a very strong comeback and this is truly a fantastic piece, especially for the price point. It is super, super handsome in my opinion. And if you look at Bubba Mercier's new offerings with the Clifton, the brand is going definitely in the right direction, at least in my humble opinion. Not to mention this watch also wears a larger, so it's perfect for a guy with a slightly bigger wrist. Bummer Mercier Capelin flyback, hell of a deal, especially at the price I have it at. Now moving third, we're going haute horlogerie, and I wanted to bring up Audemars Piguet. <laughs> now I've mentioned this many times, but uh, you guys could guess, I'm going to pick the Jules Audemars chronograph. Why? Because it's not a royal oak, and that means no one gives a crap about it. Audemars Piguet, the famous one-trick pony uh, brand, makes some other really fantastic watches. And this Jules Audemars, particularly the white gold version with that cream dial, it's so beautiful. It houses an in-house AP movement. It's made in solid white gold. Once again, the strap conforms to the case so there's no lug gap. Comes on a deployant clasp. And that cream dial is just so handsome. This watch is a sporty look in the 50s, but a dress watch today. And with a price tag, I think in the 40s or 50s originally, this could be had for well under half of that, but well, well under half of that, which makes this a kick-ass deal. In fact, anything by AP that's not a Royal Oak is a crazy deal due to lack of demand. I highly suggest you check out some of those offerings. Now we're gonna go with a watch that is well known, but it's just not popular. And I've made a video about this too, and that is the Breitling Chronomat, particularly with the B01 movement. Guys, love it or hate it, but this is a 500 meter water resistant watch with a column wheel chronograph with a vertical clutch and extended power reserve. That is fantastic. Housing the in-house B01 movement, as I said, with the vertical clutch, column wheel, and with um, the extended power reserve, this watch, you know, this movement might have gone through some teething pains early on, but it is now considered a true workhorse. And the fact that you have a 500 water meter water resistant watch which yes no one's actually going to swim to 500 meters guys don't leave any of those stupid comments it's a sign of um it's a sign of quality it's a sign of durability that a chronograph a watch which essentially has two extra holes drilled in the case can be made water resistant to 500 meters especially when the speedmaster is only 50 and i think the daytona is only 100 so breitling really built a super solid watch now, what was wrong with this? When it came out, it was priced just under the price of the original uh, Rolex Daytona pre-ceramic, which of course means these didn't sell well. However, on the second-hand market, they're an absolute bargain. Love it or hate it, this is a fantastic watch. And now we're coming to one of the most ridiculous deals in the watch market, also due to uh, the brand not being particularly strong in its marketing, and that is the Maurice Lacroix Annual Calendar Flyback. This Maurice Lacroix, well, first it's an annual calendar, and it's a flyback chronograph. And yes, Maurice Lacroix has taken a beating recently, but you can pick these up under $3,000. By the way, did you know that some of the base voucher movements that Maurice Lacroix has used were also used in, the Richard, in some Richard Meal watches, which are like, I don't know, uh, 40 times the price? Yes, Maurice Lacroix doesn't always make great watches. They make some real crap with their quartz gold-plated pieces. But this one here is a real winner. Flyback, uh, big date, annual calendar. For $3,000, I mean, I'm just dropping the mic. I have nothing else to say when it comes to that. Now, unfortunately, you're not really going to get the super brand cachet and the retail, the resale value is not really there.
but who cares? This thing is truly a steal. My only real issue with it is it does wear a little small for me. Anyway guys, those are five chronographs that I feel are seriously overlooked. What do you think? I know there's many more out there. I would like to know which ones you think are also overlooked in the comments section below. Also, please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, it really does help. And of course, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any content. And if you want to see that Bama Mercier Capelin flyback, it's live on Delray Watch Supply, delraywatch.com. Guys, thank you so much for sticking with me for another episode of Federico Talks Watches, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.